There was a lot of decision questioning. You're like, hmm. Is this like is this a man, wise choice? Are muskies that fun? <laughs> are my parents proud of me right now? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, folks, to another exciting episode of the Today's Angler podcast. I'm Lee Talkin, along with my great friend, Robbie. Yeah, how's it What's going, up, Robbie? guys? Uh, it is snowing in the 715. Uh, I was out yeah. in the water yesterday. It was like 40 degrees. It was awesome. Hiked into, I don't know, what, mile into the woods, and I caught a, a large mouth. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Exciting stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Big day. <clears throat> I don't know if I'm going to be editing that one, but eh, we'll see. Caught, caught a couple warm mouth too, which was exciting. Um, but <laughs> warm mouth? I know. Really? I, I couldn't even believe it. They're like freaking three, like two inches long. They weren't like green sunfish? Maybe. I don't know. I thought those two were the same. So, all right. <laughs> well, well, then we'll there is out. a different. <laughs> yeah, they're at any rate, sunfish. Ice fishing has been much less than, than fruitful for us the past month. Let's say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we apologize. We've been trying. Uh, however, uh, I guess we'll uh, do this. This is a uh, this is a lock and load, folks. So yeah. we'll, uh, uh, we're very excited today to bring you the story of none other. Yeah, none other, I'll try that again, uh, than Mr. Chris Willen, who, uh, those of you that have watched our channel, you know that we love fishing with Chris. Uh, Robbie, what are your thoughts on fishing with Chris? <laughs> Some Mr. of Willen? the most fun I have had fishing is with Mr. Chris Willen. Uh, <laughs> guys, if you have not done a float with him, you got to do it because it is just some of the most fun you will have in a boat with uh, a pretty goofy guy. <laughs> It's kind of well, right? the river the river fishing uh the float trips are without a doubt the ones i look forward to the most personally for me uh they are the most fun uh casting at targets short fishing and the fish in the river are just so unique uh you know the northern wisconsin greenbacks are just so cool to fish for and we just love those <laughs> you, trips and you literally float down and you're looking at all the different rocks, and Willen goes, okay, that's a good spot, that's a good spot. He knows it like the back of his hand. It is just yeah. some of the most, like, ugh. You get out, yeah, I mean, you launch at sunrise, and then you get off whenever the float's done. It's like, feels like an hour's pass. It's just that entertaining. Can't beat it. Some of the most satisfying musky fishing you will ever do, no question. Yep. So uh, we're happy to have you, Chris. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great, man. Uh, thanks so much for having me on, guys. And a little different than our usual yeah. uh, togethers. I'm not shoveling water right now. <laughs> shoveling, yeah, no just doubt. snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just <laughs> snow. Frozen water. Frozen water, yeah. yeah. Uh, have you been out crappy fishing or anything? I guess mm. I haven't talked to you about ice fishing. Yeah, I went a little bit with Michael Early and my buddy Tommy down the road. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, mm, not since we, since we were out last. Actually, dude, that's the last time we went when we went trout fishing. Oh, gotcha. That's the last time I've been out. I yeah. forgot about that. Yeah, I mean, I enjoy it, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah. not as much no, as you don't. Sure. No, you don't. Stop lying to us. <laughs> <laughs> You'd rather be in Tennessee right now. <laughs> yeah, hey, this is the first winter that I haven't been in Tennessee in uh, uh, eight years. Has it been that long? Yep. So, yeah. it's weird um in the last what two three years it's just been been pretty tough uh last terrible. year with covid yeah so right as uh things really started picking up down there we got hit with that and i, yeah. had, I had to uh evacuate <laughs> decided that in a uh 26 foot camper in the middle of a boat factory parking lot was yeah. not where i wanted to ride out the pan <laughs> yeah yep <laughs> so i came home yep um, and then the year before that, we just got hit with crazy rains down there. Mm -hmm. uh, we got more rain where I fish at in Tennessee. We had more rain than Seattle, Washington, which Weird. is a wow. uh, ridiculous statistic. statistic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. But I miss it. I miss yeah. it down there. It's been a, um, I've been going on some trips and stuff though. So, I mean, I'm getting mm -hmm. some musky fishing in, but yep. I, I definitely miss it. Lee, you know, I mean, when you stop, oh yeah, you, you, you traveled to guide. Uh, when you kind of not, I don't want to say give up on an area, but when you say, okay, maybe I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Go back and forth on your decision. And you're like, oh, you know, you do miss those big fish. And, and yeah. Everything. Yeah. What you is know, the, well, what's, Oh, go, what go was Robbie. like the biggest fish that you've had in the boat in Tennessee? 
Uh, I actually caught a really big one with a uh, guest that you guys just had on. Um, I don't know. Oh, yeah. This will go before mine, probably, so I'm yeah. not spoiler alert, but yeah. Holbert came down and we fished, and um, I got a spectacular muskie with him in the boat. Uh, that was really cool, and then we've caught a bunch of other ones that were right around that 50-inch mark yeah. also. And, uh, and these um, things are fat. Things. Yeah, yeah, they're pre-spawn. Right. So it, as big as you can catch them, pretty much. <laughs> Cool man. Yeah. Michael came down last year and he uh he got to, to uh experience some pretty awesome Tennessee fishing. Right. I think the biggest one he got was like 46. But wow. just and it was they're like this. <laughs> yeah. Completely inhaled a uh giant crankbait right at the boat in the yeah. figure eight, like gone. Like first turn, and it was just like came out of nowhere. This is sick. And the yeah. rods just really doubled over, and we were in such a weird spot that. I had to be on the tiller. Yeah. I couldn't use the electric motor. So oh, it was kind no of kidding. Uh, it was cool. What a wrangle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Dang. But it, yeah. Well, folks, why don't we, uh, yeah, let's, we're going to take a dive into uh, the life of Chris Willen and what it's actually uh, was like for him as a gyp, uh, gypsy muskie guide. Um, Not just with lakes, but with rivers. I mean, that's very yeah. interesting because <laughs> that's yeah, for sure. You can't just, you know, launch your boat on a, on a river and be like, well, okay. I mean, you got to float those rivers so many times. It's yeah. Just, you can't just look at a map. I should say, you know, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, <laughs> There's no navionics. Yeah. Yeah. The, the map helps to a certain point, but right. Not really. I mean, the, the, the best thing you can do is go out there and get eyes on it. And with the river, um, a lot of times the things are going a little bit quicker yeah. than you be doing it in a lake. So it's not like you can analyze a weed line for yeah. a extended period of time. It's kind of like, okay, sure. well, here comes this riffle and this drop and it looks like that's the spot. And we got about four casts so. until you're gone and you're never, you're not getting back to it that day. <laughs> yeah. And that's the other thing too. That's yeah. the river, right. You can't go back on stuff. Yeah. So you just got to fly. Yeah. It's so Chris, uh, tell me how old are you and let's hear about uh how you got started at this crazy thing i'm uh 34 and uh this is my 10th year of guiding full-time mm-hmm. so kind of a cool milestone in yeah. my uh, career i guess that's um, and full-time call that's home awesome. yeah uh, i live just south of hayward I, I live not too far from robbie so uh northern wisconsin is my home and i've been up here for um that amount of time since 2011 Mm -hmm. i came up and and that's what i've been doing uh kind of did a little bit of part-time stuff before that but yeah nothing serious and then just kind of made the leap yeah and uh, you grew up in illinois right correct yep grew up in so how how did that uh musky addiction really hit you um so my uncle had a cabin in eagle river Okay. okay so on the uh the tamarack flowage Oh, wow. Okay. So, um, just, you know, being a little kid and going up there and staying at Uncle Bob's cabin. And, yeah, and, Uncle Bob's you know, perfect name for it. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Everyone's got an Uncle Bob. Yeah. So, you I know, don't. going to all the... Uh, <laughs> I guess I don't either. <laughs> resorts and bars and stuff. You see all the mounted muskies, right? When you're mm-hmm. a little kid and you're just completely... Yeah, oh uh, enthralled. Yeah. It's amazing. And then... You know, when you're a little kid fishing off the dock for panfish and stuff, like I had seen muskies, I'd yeah. seen them swim by, and I I got my dad somehow to buy me a, a bucktail when I was a kid. Yeah, you know, throwing it on the Pump. Zebco and stuff. Right, right. <laughs> it's not working out, but you know, I'd see some muskies when I was a kid, so I was always just kind of like thought that they were amazing and sure. everything else. And, and then you know, going what up lake? There, uh, what dock were you fishing off of? What lake is this? Just just the one in my my uncle's backyard he lived on the the flowage there mm-hmm. so it was wow. um, just right there and his neighbor was a really good musky angler and he had a bunch of mounts and pictures everywhere yeah. you know and i was always like i want to go talk to him i want to do that <laughs> i think he knows what he's doing when was so, the first musky though uh my first musky was until much later i did i yeah. had a really quite quite a struggle with catching them when i was younger yeah but then uh later on like the later middle school early uh early high school era is when i when i started really catching them sure gotcha. and uh, you know it's hard when you're a kid you know it's not like riding your bike and going to catch largemouth no stuff. it's a whole different deal <laughs> Muskies offshore and, yeah. and you know i had my boat i had a little boat when i was a kid but it was on a lake that didn't have muskies sure we had pike so mm-hmm. i got tons and tons and tons of northern pike right no muskies right. later 
didn't fill the void <laughs> the musky yeah. void <laughs> yeah. gosh that's cool um so you finished out high school went to college for a little bit no college right? for no me. college no. i thought you oh gotcha oh right on no i went to went to work uh just worked for a few years, fished a lot. I, I had a job uh, right out of high school that I worked from one in the afternoon to nine thirty at night. Oh, so you get to uh, fish in the mornings. I fished nights a lot. Oh, gotcha. So take the boat oh, wow. to work, go, go and fish after that, or, yeah. um, you know, just go meet my buddies. My buddy had a little toughy Esox mag, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of us, you know, I listened to Herbie. That's what he said he yeah. had too. Yeah, and I think you had one, didn't you? Um, no, I never had a mag. My buddy had okay. one. Oh, I had Lund pillars like Robbie's now, yeah. actually. Okay, maybe I'm thinking of Pete. Pete, Pete had a yeah. mag. Yep, and that's true. Uh, yeah, you know, this same yeah. story, kind of little little boat that's perfect for musky fishing. And then even before that, though, my buddy had a 14-foot tracker yeah. that we caught some pretty big muskies out of that was ridiculous, yeah. you know. <laughs> Gosh, that's cool. You had, well, some, yeah, Illinois, you, you had some special puddles in Northern Illinois to really. Yeah. <laughs> Get, yeah. So I yeah. also had a nine and a half foot, uh, we called it the bathtub. Yep. It was a nine and a half foot uh, bass tender. Yep. Which is like a plastic boat that oh, I got funny. from a moving job. We moved this person and he had this boat and he wanted us to move like all of his appliances. And I was like, yeah, we're not moving that stuff. It's too, too big. And he's like, I'll give you guys this boat. Yep. So long story short, we moved all that stuff because I was like, I know exactly where that boat's going. Right. <laughs> and we caught a ton of muskies out of that stupid boat, which is hilarious. Yeah. Oh, but cool. yeah, and then, you know, made so the That boat. was like a no motor musky lake or something? Yeah, uh, electric motor. Sure. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Gotcha. So uh, with Leech Lake strain muskies and tiger muskies. How fun. So wow. It was a lot of fun. We had, I mean, uh, I'm talking about a puddle. Yeah. This was a puddle, right. and uh, we would have we we had some crazy days. It was fun, some ten fish days, and you know mixed bag stuff where you're catching tigers and you're catching leechers. But a lot of times, what I noticed out there, which is interesting, and take this for what it is, but if you were catching a lot of tigers, you weren't catching the le leechers, and if you were catching multiple leechers in a day, you probably weren't going to get a tiger. Huh. And, and it was completely just, different. You know, we're talking about an ecosystem that is so small that shouldn't have as many big fish as it had. Yeah. So it's not the same as other places, but yep. in that particular situation, that was what, what the uh, kind of the norm was, was you were going to get one or the other. Holy cow. Do you have okay. any pictures of these fish? Tons, yeah. Yeah, oh, that would be cool. Cool. Some yeah, we'd like days. to see a couple. How, how big was the biggest tiger? Uh, so when I was fishing it, um, the biggest tiger that I ever caught was right over 40 inches, just, yep. just nearly. Yep. Um, but we caught a ton of them in the three foot to like yeah, 30 fun. range. In the nine foot um, boat. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, the nine, nine, four. Yeah. That's nice. cool. How about the oh, rod length? How about the leech fish? The leech fish got big. Yeah, they got big. They were up over 50 inches. Um, I never mom. landed one that big. I got a 48. Um, oh, but a couple of my buddies got got some fish over 50 and then a yeah. good friend of mine, um that i just kind of had made from fishing the lake he also lived on the lake yeah and it seemed like every year he would get a 50 incher flipping Jeez. back jigs off his dock just screwing around in the evening yeah he would giant one off his dock and he was a pmtt guy so yeah. i mean he when he's told me it was a 50 i was yeah like, it was legit yep yeah you know yeah. so he was cool his name was chris also but mm -hmm. Um, it was cool, man. You know, and there was a big largemouth out there. Every once in a while, you'd have a yeah, must come grab your bass, like we all have happen every once Jeez. in a while with bass fishing. It was a fun place to grow up, and it was a fun place to, uh, you know, musky fish and and stuff like that. Yeah, really go. get your, you know, like just see spoiled. how good. Yeah, spoiled, but still. Spoiled. <laughs> yeah. And then coming up here, um, I I started coming up here in 2011 with my buddy Tim and learning the fly fishing for musky game sure and that's really what kicked off my musky guiding and really got me to uh move everything quit quit my job yeah uh, and move up into a camper in the middle of the woods i lived at a resort not with just one guy though right <laughs> well at first we had four guys in a little trailer and uh that was terrible yeah and, uh, i can imagine <laughs> heat of summer four dudes and one little camper <laughs> 
Yeah, it was a park home, so I guess you know you got to. I got to class myself up a little bit. It wasn't like a pull behind. It was a uh, yeah semi permanent. Sure. Uh, so there was a toilet at least. Wheel. Was there a shower in it? <laughs> there was a shower. We had wow. a shower at the. Uh, I suppose at the, the park. Yeah. yeah oh, that's funny. Yeah, so we did that for two years, and then um, kind of disbanded the the band there. The clan, then... <laughs> the fly fishing. Were they all fly fishermen? We all were. Yeah. Wow. That's got, that had to have been fun. Those couple years. years. Cool. We caught a lot of fish, man. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. Spent just. In so you guys were all like, you were doing like, I don't know what some, some trips here and there trying to build it and then just fishing, everyone just fishing pretty much. To be honest with you, the first couple of years of me being there, I didn't guide very much. Yeah. You know, yep. maybe between 15 and 25 trips uh, a season. Sure. Yeah. You know, just the, barely the bare minimum yep. to have a couple dollars and and survive yeah so, what well, what boat were you in then um so i had a that was like right around the era where we got involved with towy boats okay gotcha well so i had a towy um hmm. i had the original um dude it was like in the teens of like hull which yeah. which hull number yeah sure and, um, oh, i'm kidding before that, we had one even prior to the one that I bought. All of us had one that we, when we were working with one that was kind of a communal boat. Yep. That the guy from Toey was like, hey, take this thing up to northern Wisconsin and beat it up and, and see what, what happens in those rocky rivers and, and, yep. rivers and stuff. And so we got to, you know, I, I have to be honest, he was a brave man for giving the group of guys that he did a boat and say, beat it up. Because yeah, sure. We did. <laughs> yeah, I bet. We, we drug it. Those are rough it, waters. We carried it places. We put it places where, you know, and, and to be honest, you know, Todd at Toey is a very good friend of mine, and he's heard all these stories before. Yeah. But in the beginning, it was like, well, shit, this isn't our boat, man. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Let's give her. <laughs> you know, like, send yeah. it. And we'll see yeah. what happened. So right. we, we did a lot of cool stuff with it. And yeah. And found out that that boat is incredibly durable. And, right. And, uh, you That's know, cool. all of us. Now at this point, all of us but one guy in that original group, we all have them. Have so, them, sure, sure. Wow, it's kind of a cool thing to have up here. It's you know like uh, yeah, ten year relationships, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Everybody said this before in boats, right? There's no perfect boat. There's no do all boat. There's no boat that does right. everything. But but as far as a Swiss Army knife, uh, that thing you can do some cool stuff. Yeah, you guys have been. Yep, yep. No, that so, is that is pretty sweet. So that's what we had, man. And then we had some drift boats too, just mm -hmm. traditional Western style dory. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're not familiar with. Well, you guys maybe have seen if you've seen some of the episodes. Yeah. Yep. Together, but uh, people watching, but yeah, just those, man. Just that real simple boats. No, no nothing. You know, no, a couple no oars, a couple seats. <laughs> nothing, man. So <laughs> and an anchor. Chris, tell tell us about uh, your first guide trip ever. Your first paying customer. I always like to hear. What oh, that's sure. like for for someone okay so i had a really I, I i hung out with fishing guides uh yeah before, before all this so i got to hear all theirs and and everybody and uh and so like the classic line you know how long have you been guiding uh. and it's my first trip so my one buddy just said look at your watch and say about five minutes <laughs> and just laugh and go yeah <laughs> and hope it goes well sure enough how long you've been guiding about five minutes about five minutes <laughs> there we go <laughs> you guys are the guinea pig yep so, I, I have to be honest though oh uh, that's very funny lucky, very blessed um i, I we did well you yeah know, we caught, caught some muskies it was and, a fly fishing uh, trip fly fishing yeah yep cool i you know really the first few hundred something guide trips i ever did i never even guided conventional anglers yeah it was, uh, it was all except for the part-time you know piddly stuff before that but yeah but you know like really talking about guiding all the time and making a living doing it, it was all fly fishing for muskies and what wow. what's the percentage of um people that have done it before to newbies on on fly trips man within the last you know coming into my 10th year so i've had every everything on the spectrum yeah. from uh, never casted a fly rod before. Yeah. Oh, that's gotta be fun. To uh, avid travel the world fly angler, yep. never seen a muskie before guy. Sure. So, and everything in between. And honestly, it's a crapshoot. Yeah. You, you guys know what it's like, muskie guiding. I never know what's gonna happen. Or, right. 
or what's what's uh what person's skill level is is going to be the, what's you know what right it's going to be right but i will tell you that a lot of times that the person that has the least amount of skill level like just coming into it new which there's nothing wrong with that absolutely um they do pretty well <laughs> all the time. It's amazing. The percentage of newbies, the musky fishing, catching big yeah. fish is just unreal. <laughs> That's true. I don't yeah. know why, but My it always Larry seems that way. Theory. And uh, his theory is that your odds of catching a big musky are directly proportionate to the amount that you deserve. It. Yeah. You know? Like if you haven't been putting in the 10, 12, 13 hour days for how many, for the whole season and you haven't caught a big one. Yep. But you just show up and, and just, you're, boom, good. Bang. you're good. You're, you're going to get one. Yep. <laughs> Parachute in and, and roll get, a big Get one. the heck out of there. Pretty Gosh. much, man. I mean, honestly, some of the biggest muskies that I've guided to have guys yeah. were just, you know, showed up. All right, Chris, I got a question for you. So all the fly guiding you've done, how many times have someone put a hook in you? Uh, not that much. Um, a, few, a few times for sure, but I have very specific rules when it comes to uh, how we are casting and where the flies are going. There is absolutely double zero casting the fly over me. Yeah, yeah. Never, never, ever, ever. I don't care how good you are. Yeah. That doesn't happen. Yep. So, um, <laughs> I've taken more out of them, of, out of clients than I've taken out of myself. Oh, wow. Sure. Where they hit themselves uh, or... Yeah. Uh, they hit their buggy. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you got to think they're standing up, right? And I'm sitting in the middle. Right. So the flies are a little higher. Yeah. So I, I, I'm a... Uh, Pretty expert at this, huh? Like the Matrix. I'm, I'm slightly Neo, like, I, uh, yeah. I can see when that's coming and I'm getting down. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Sounds like risky business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, we... Um, a lot of times with the flies, you're barbless. Sure. Yeah. Just because they inhale them, they're neutrally buoyant. So when a muskie eats it, they really get it. Yeah. You know, they, it, and <clears throat> they can get hooked pretty deep sometimes. So a lot of times with it, we just run barbless and you hook comes right out. No, no problem to the fish at all. Right. And, and really with flies, if you give them anything as far as like non constant pressure, they can spit that fly a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So barbless um you don't i don't think it hinders you sure. really okay. sure uh, occasionally i will say occasionally um in the summertime when they're crazy jumpy yeah that's yeah. probably probably not the uh, best rule <laughs> you know a barb might help you yeah. out a little bit there yeah. so how many cool. times have you been hooked <laughs> you <laughs> didn't answer <laughs> yeah just a handful just a yeah. handful i've got yeah. my hat stapled to my head a few yeah. times <laughs> yeah and uh, i've gotten hit in the shoulder before yeah. um oh, you know funny. nothing too crazy nothing too crazy hmm. i had to take one out of a guy's cheek one time that was a little dicey yes. that was a little, that wasn't too fun that was just a bass fly but um two years ago um so i've got a couple guys uh some of the original crew the original guys that we all lived together yep. we all worked together in the fall when we have group trips and sure. stuff so uh my buddy tim long story short but my buddy tim jumped in the boat with one of our mutual clients one day and timmy buried a five spinner spinnerbait hook musky fly in his hand oh, like yeah, bad yeah. and uh that was probably the worst one that i've dealt with mm. um as far as burying a mm -hmm. fly in your hand because i'm in you got to think that fly is moving pretty right. quick when it's coming forward. And sure. And yeah, it was, it was terrible. Past the barb. He yeah. was fishing a barb. And yeah, it was not, not some surgery. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't just go to shore and go to the doctor and get the thing out. No. You're, you got to, no, you're in the boat. The you're on seven, you know, that particular float, we, that one's around nine miles. Sure. When did he get stick? We, stuck? We were probably like a mile and a half, maybe two miles oh, into man. the day. Oh, wow. So seven miles of flow. It, was he still rowing with it in him? Oh, he was fishing. Oh, gotcha. Oh, okay. I was rowing. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Gotcha. Uh, I got it out. We got it out of him. And he fished the rest of the day. Oh, jeez. A little bandage. Yeah. <laughs> I was okay. attached to a, uh, which I'm sure has happened to both of you guys. I, I got attached to a four-footer on St. Clair. My buddy caught on a pounder and uh, um was it bad bad or my, you know, i went into my palm when i went to deal with it and um 
that one was the worst time I've ever been hooked. It, it went in and then just as fast as it went in, the fish shook like crazy and ripped it back <laughs> out. Right. The and it was squirting. Right. That was gross. <laughs> best, best case scenario <laughs> though, really. Uh, to be connected any you know, like any of us any of us you know yeah. i mean we've all you got to be prepared for that keep up on the uh, loop trick and yep. uh make sure you got cutters yep. no i've never had a musky hook in me oh that's a terrible thing to say out loud yeah <laughs> <laughs> better not God sorry so that was loud i i sure have <laughs> <laughs> that's funny uh. okay so so you're you're up north you're starting to run some trips now you're getting getting in the swing of things. Uh, yep. uh, tell us some more. Where do you where do you go from here? So yeah, I got my own camper. Um, living at a at a lodge there, kind of working at the lodge, doing like ground stuff to pay my my rent. Yeah. Yep. And, and fishing all the time, and um, doing some guide trips for sure. And it was just like, as you guys know, Northern Wisconsin. Um, whatever your your vein may be call it whether it's lakes or rivers mm -hmm. it's endless you know and there's you know it takes a lifetime to learn all this stuff so it was just really gung-ho um for the first few years just you know foot on the gas pedal and just going every single day fishing new water fishing new stretches yep. of river learning as much finding yeah. accesses you know some of these rivers don't have like very well marked accesses sure so you might spend a whole day driving oh, with a Cl with a Clint's a really in enthralled with you right now. Uh, he was looking at you. He's up on the table. I guess you guys oh, okay. can't see this. I see. Nope. <laughs> no. No. Gotcha. Anyways. So yeah, just just doing that stuff and 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 guiding picked up. You know, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't always slow. Yeah. And uh, you know, and you just learn your stretches and and taking people out. And I got to say, I was I was pretty lucky. Um, again, where I had really great customers to start out with that wanted to keep you know, doing it. Yeah. Musky fly fishing was kind of a newer right. thing yeah. mainstream by no means. Is it new? Like my buddy Larry's been doing it since the seventies, yeah. Yeah. but as far as like, you know, commercial mass of people yeah. wanting to do it. Um, and in the first few years, I, you know, I, I just can't, I mean, I, it was just such a good timing thing mm -hmm. because the the quality of anglers that I got in the very beginning was so high sure. that it made what I was doing a little bit easier, easier. Yeah. because these guys came out and they were, you know, schooled fly fishermen. And it wasn't like, Hey, let me teach you how to cast. It was like, Hey, let me teach you where these fish are at, sure. you know? Yeah. And, and they got to, so it was awesome. Right. I mean, it you was know, just, I look back at it and I'm just like, you lucky SOB. Yeah, but, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you really that was you know, I gotta say that was a Perfect. that was a hand that went sure. like that dealt my way. You could worry you know? about fishing and not the actual te yeah, technique, and, which is sweet. Yeah. And to be honest with you, my fly fishing was so limited, like it was just two muskies. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a little bit of steelhead, a little bit of smallmouth, a little bit of farm pond stuff, bluegills and largemouth and stuff like that, but like as far as like trout and like being able to talk fly fishing, yeah. like bugs and things but, like that. Like I was, I was like, <laughs> like, I remember one guy, no, this kidding. guy showed up and he showed up with a briefcase full of all these bugs in formaldehyde or whatever that were all like preserved. Yeah. And he's showing me all these bugs because he's this crazy trout guy. And finally I had to go listen to you. I don't, give a crap. <laughs> I, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> Like, yeah. I don't know what that is. Yep. You're talking about size hooks that I've never even heard yep. of. Like, you want to go musky fish? <laughs> samples in formaldehyde, little jars. Dozens of them. Wow. I was, the whole I'm surprised you aren't taking off into the woods. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a hole putting lotion on my skin or yeah. something. But, yeah. So, <laughs> but no. <laughs> so, I mean... <laughs> I almost felt like a, like slightly like it of an imposter at sure, first, you yeah. know, sure. all these fly guys and they come out and they're talking all this fly fish and stuff. And my brain is just wired to muskies, right. yep. you know, and that's the only correlation between throwing this string with feathers is because I saw those, how those fish reacted to yeah. it and how good they ate it. Yeah. And I was like, I need to get good at this. Sure. 
and that's that's kind of how the whole fly fishing thing happened it was just like it was a better tool in a lot of cases it was a better tool for fishing rivers yeah. you know and 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 really i said it just a second ago but but i got to say it again how they ate it like the first time i saw a muskie eat a fly i was just like, yeah, like that was whoa cool. like that Gone. fish was so pissed yeah like it it was fooled yeah. you know, like yeah. it was completely fooled and it ate it like it would be eating a live minnow oh. And I was just like, dude, this is, this is neat, you know, the weightlessness of the fly is unique. Well, it's motion without movement. Right. So the fly is always moving, even if you're not moving. Right. Right. And a lot of times you get bit on that pause. Right. And even on the pause, the fly is still undulating and kind of being weird. They can't take that. Right. (laughs) Uh That is. So, you know, the fly, the evolution of, of my fly angling started right there with muskies and and um and everything else and and you know it was it was really cool i gotta tell you i missed a lot of the cool stuff lee i missed malax i missed all that really cool stuff that that you guys got to be a part of but i felt like i got to be a part of this kind of um beginning of fly angling for muskies for sure and i got to be on the forefront of that bike yeah and it was like everywhere you went muskies had not seen flies in a way that they were conditioned in any way yeah. right so it was a new double, like double 10, 10 for you guys it was a new double 10 right yeah and it, or an eddie bait back in the yeah. day or you know whatever yep, yep. <laughs> oh did i lose you guys no nope. nope, nope, you're there well i can't see you guys but hopefully you can see me oh really oh yeah, yeah. yeah. no it's we all can... good yeah okay. we nothing has changed here <laughs> good deal <laughs> good deal <laughs> Well, I feel like uh, I'm guiding with a blindfold on because I can't see anything, right. but let's just keep going. Yep. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, let's talk about maybe your first big fish on the fly. Like, Oh, sure. Um, my first really, really big one was uh, actually hilarious. I was uh, fishing with a buddy of mine from up in Duluth. Was this in 2011 and, and or when you just moved up this there? Was, man, I'd have to look back. I mean, we caught a bunch of really nice yeah. muskies uh in the beginning but like when you're talking like a fish in the four foot plus yeah. range um i didn't get one of those for the for the first couple of years i got a bunch of 40 40 to 45 inch right. fish but not, not um, that four foot class but yeah my first really really big one um long long story but we were in a, a borrowed boat uh the guy whose boat it was was on a guide trip with one of our other buddies that was in front of us we all had our own boats but this guy just got this boat yep. he was our age and he's like I want you guys to row this and see what you think about it. And I was kind of like, dude, this is a brand. I don't want to take your new boat down our Rocky rivers. Yeah. But anyway, long story we did. And, um, we got to a pool where actually I've, you guys have been there with me before. Mm-hmm. Uh, I call it the Volkswagen hole. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> he was like, Hey, let me row for a little bit. And it's like halfway through the day. Yep. What kind of weather? He, he, dude, sunny, sunny, like oh, cool. nothing yeah. you would think would be like uh, a, a big fish day. You know? <laughs> Yeah, today's the PB day, yeah. you know, and um, he, he wanted to row. So I was like, yeah, go ahead. And we were coming into a spot. And and to be honest with you, at that time, that spot was a spot where I had seen fish and stuff like that. But I didn't know the uh, the quality of that spot mm-hmm. at the time. Yet. Yep. Sure. And um, long story short, I make a cast. I strip the fly in this massive muskies behind it. Uh my buddy can't row and we're leaving and yeah. i'm like i don't know row row back row and yeah. i'm figure eight and figure eight and then the fish is is playing yeah. you know and this on a fly and it, and it, on a fly so yeah a fly oh boy <laughs> yeah and and the fish takes off and i'm like dude that fish wanted to eat so badly yeah like we can catch that muskie and so i switched with them and i got in the rower seat and i rode us back up and I switched flies and then set him up to where he was going to be on the line. And I switched back and I got in the front to cast again. Yep. And so he's rowing and fish does the same thing. And uh, I'm like, oh man, this fish, we're going to get it. Yeah. So da- daisy chain again, I row us back up, switch flies again. Fish comes in. Derek's got a little bit better handle of the sticks this time. Yep. Fish comes in, doesn't eat and then sits 
goes off and then sits in this sand like right in front of us and i can see yeah. it and i'm just like oh my gosh i'm gonna catch this fish damn it yeah, you know yeah. and so i throw this cast and the current catches the line and the fly goes right in front of the fish and i mean the feathers had to just touch its Take nose away. you know because yeah. it and then i just twitched it really hard and the thing just went <laughs> and i was like all right we got him and i set the hook and we're fighting the fish and Derek forgets in the excitement that he's in control. Yeah. Right. He's the one. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm fighting this fish. Derek's going down and there's a rapid below us and, and he's headed towards it. And my fish is going the other direction. Yeah. Oh. And I'm like, dude, you got to do this. You got to do that. And finally yeah. I just go, see ya. And I just jumped out. Oh, and, my uh, gosh. Slightly shallow river. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> where that fish was holding so here's a here's a uh a, 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 a t- uh tech tip or whatever you want to call yeah. it to truly have a very big musky in a river in a shallow river like that you have to have some sort of a basin yep. right some sort of deep water adjacent to wherever this fish is at yep. right well how i found that basin is i tried to walk through it. <laughs> so you're and doing the doggy paddle with the rod <laughs> so i got the, the rod and i'm stripping oh line and lines all over the river yeah I'm like up to my, my shoulders and water or whatever. Yeah. And I get to the shore. I'm completely soaked. I land the fish. Derek had anchored the boat and swam over to me. <laughs> and uh, we got some pictures of it. And I actually cut my line, my leader, everything to the length of the fish. Cause we didn't, the boat was so far away. Yeah. Oh my. And uh, we measured it that night and it was just over 50 inches. And I never called that fish a 50 incher, obviously, because we didn't actually measure it. It was like a cut line. Yeah, deal. Sure. Deal. But, but at that point, that was the biggest muskie that I'd wow. ever caught on a fly. And I think that I'd ever caught, period. And um, wow, what a freak. It was, cool. what a f- it was a cool experience. <laughs> you, were, you jumped out of a boat for it. I've jumped never heard this story. <laughs> yeah, well, we were going the wrong direction. So <laughs> I wanted to go that way. He was going that way. And then yada, yada, yada. Oh but then gosh. the next day. Uh, I could see that going bad yeah. so fast. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It was. I mean. You know, yeah. miracles happen. Another, another lucky situation. Yeah. Wow! And I remember the next day, um, I took Derek to a different spot, and he caught one bigger. Really? Wow! Yeah, they're not necessarily longer, but just like yeah, thick. So much fatter and bigger. It was just like, well, wow. These are a couple of good days. No, I'm kidding. So what, <laughs> it was like 2013, 2014, 12, 12 13, 13, somewhere in there. Yeah. How exciting. Wow, you were probably so screwed at that point. Like, this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. (laughs) Never never left. I mean, I went, for the first couple years of guiding up here, I would go back to where I grew up and I'd work um, in the wintertime. Okay, yep. A couple years of that, and then I just decided I was going to go guide elsewhere. Yeah. So I just went and guided in Tennessee. But yeah, I mean, once I made the decision to guide full time, I never really looked back. It was just like, this is is what we're doing. Hmm. That's cool. Uh, yeah tell us some more about uh what your schedule was those years as far as uh you know northern wisco versus traveling um and what it took to uh uh, to make that happen a little more about your trailer i know uh i don't know if this is the trailer robbie and i got to stay in yeah so well i had two yeah Uh, I had one that that i got up here in in wisconsin that i bought from the lodge that i stayed at And I was pretty sure that if I tried to hook that thing up to a truck and move it, that I wouldn't have a home anymore oh, wow. That it would just fall yeah, apart. Yeah. So uh, that one stayed in Wisconsin yep. and uh, I got braver uh, a couple of years later and actually moved it down closer to where I live now onto the river. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, so that was a 1994 uh, Gulf Stream that I don't know if you guys remember it was like purple and pink and like kind of a faded uh, sure. sea foam. so it was very 80s uh, awesome. color scheme and that, that thing was great um, I incredible. just remember the stickers all over covered in stickers I'm pretty sure the stickers are the only reason it didn't fall apart when we <laughs> yeah, moved it. Just... I know we've got some video of that yeah, I know yeah, we can roll that yeah, here yeah. none of the doors locked the plumbing didn't work uh, it leaked terribly yep. when it would rain. It had like pots and pans everywhere, <laughs> collecting rainwater. Um, I can't remember how many times I I had mice like run over me in the middle sure. of the night. Oh yeah, and how many 
hundreds of mice I killed in traps. Oh, I can imagine the mosquitoes uh, too and that thing. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, it was terrible. But, but you know what? That thing was kick ass. Yeah. And uh, it got, it allowed me to um, do the things that I wanted to do. Yeah. And actually looking back at that thing, uh, I mean, I had friends stay in that thing, family. I had uh, a few uh, music celebrities that came out to guide that actually stayed with me in that yeah. thing, which is actually ridiculous yeah. but uh but it was awesome you know Doesn't matter. That, thing, that thing was cool it's all part and of then experience. i had another one yeah that was in tennessee that was just a little bit nicer mm -hmm. that uh but that one got got uh this is a crazy story but that one got like i don't want to say broken into because they were animals <laughs> so whatever <laughs> something <laughs> got in there some kind of but <laughs> i drove i left here it was like november it was like right after thanksgiving yeah and i drove all the way down there i get down there at like midnight to the campsite where i had left my trailer with this amazing older gentleman you know how the people in the south they're just all just top notch such great yeah. people and um uh, long story short i go in there and it smelled like a barn and I was just like, what happened to my house? <laughs> you know? and, my house stinks. <laughs> and dude, everything was destroyed. Everything. Oh, man. So uh, another, you know, trial and tribulation of uh, traveling musky guiding. But I basically unhooked my boat, unpacked enough stuff to where I could fit more stuff into there and drove my truck to Walmart, which was like 45 minutes from where, I'm at, where I lived. Yeah spent hundreds of dollars on carpet cleaner vacuum lysol 1700 gallons of bleach yeah. and uh, just went back home and cleaned it till the till the sun came up sir. and for two days i had to sleep on uh the mattress was destroyed everything was destroyed and it was to the point where like you had to soak it stuff with bleach to be even like comfortable being in there wow I'll feel bad. So for two days, I slept on the linoleum section of flooring that was like uh, in the kitchen <laughs> yep. part of the kitchen because I was pretty sure I scrubbed that to the point where there, yeah, it was, there was you're okay there. with it. Yeah. So how did they get in and what do you think they were? Raccoons or what? Yeah, raccoons probably or 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 whatever. Some, but I mean, there was just some subspecies stuff. of human. Who knows? You never know. <laughs> crazy hill yeah hill could have been some some sneaky hill person or something you know musky guide crackhead or whatever mess mess <laughs> but it was yeah it was ridiculous but i'll tell you one thing when you live in a place like that you don't spend a lot of time at home yeah so uh it just made you be in the boat more right you know i was just in my boat in the mornings and and stayed out there until till night and went in the the camper to sleep yeah and that was about it <laughs> right sure. No, that is a good, good point. So, folks, you want to be a musky guide, a traveling musky guide. There you go. <laughs> and that was actually the good places where I lived because the uh, the two different times I lived at the boat factory, the first time it was in like an abandoned till we till we had this little corner section of this like giant abandoned warehouse, right? <laughs> and uh, Todd, who owns Toey, let me live there when I was going down there to guide. Yeah. As you know, Lee and, and Robbie, you guys both know when you first start guiding in a new area, it's not like you just show up and punch a clock and you got customers yeah, right yeah. away. Right? right. So I'm learning the area and I'm getting customers filtering in and da 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 da. But I didn't have any, you know, I couldn't afford to buy another camper or, yeah. or anything like that. So I thought I was going to get this. Is, I, I honestly thought this is where it was going to end for me. Sure. Because um, that abandoned warehouse thing, like, <sighs> it was scary the, uh, the, 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 the fluorescent lights were constantly flickering like in this hallway to go to the bathroom and every time i went to the bathroom i was convinced that that little doll from saw was going to come <laughs> with out. The tricycle and i'd be like hung by barbed wire by like my butt cheeks or something in the morning like, it's gonna be terrible <laughs> so, like you know that was that was a couple oh, years of that which was sketchy yeah and then so and then another year i lived in a different part of the factory when the factory moved and i had a closet where i could stuff all my like bedding in which i had like a sleeping mat that you'd use in like a tent no. and like a sleeping bag and a little blanket and i had to be packed up and out of there by seven fifteen every morning 
and all my shit had to be stuffed into this closet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I nobody's just, living man. here. <laughs> yeah, nobody's living no. here, right? And then I would go fish, but the thing about Tennessee in the South is if you get rain, you're blown out. Sure, so sure. You're not fishing. If I'm not fishing, I literally would stay in this like 15 by 15 like lunch room that like i'd set up my little tie vice and like tie flies and like, eat <laughs> like i hope nobody comes in here today yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh man oh my god it was good it was good it was good oh yeah that would be nerve-wracking because like there was a lot of decision questioning you're like hmm is this like is this a man, wise choice are muskies that fun <laughs> are my parents proud of me right now <laughs> 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 oh my gosh but it was a wow. good time you know and a lot of fishing a lot of fishing i did i do a lot of fishing now obviously but i do a lot more guiding now than i do fishing and something that maybe if you've seen the episodes with these guys get people watching or whatever you guys know that i'm not fishing when these guys are when i'm guiding. yeah so it's a little different Rarely. than than other other types of guiding where you get to fish a little bit right. with them so uh so now i do a little bit less but so back then i i i I look back very fondly on those times because I got so much rod time. Then, sure. You know, I, I, Compared to I sure, actually yeah. got to catch them. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Wow. But yeah, good times. Good times. <laughs> so, yeah. So you, your schedule was basically uh, after Thanksgiving, you would roll down to Tennessee. Yep. After Thanksgiving, I'd stay down there all the way until they would spawn. Mm-hmm. Sure. And that was usually end of March. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, and then I'd come back up here or I'd stay down there and striper. I remember I took you guys striper fishing. I think the first time we fished yep. Yep. and um, I'd stay down there and do some of that or do some screwing around or maybe go to the keys for a little bit and hang out and hmm. do some saltwater yeah. fishing. How many years um, did you do the smallmouth deal in the spring by St. Clair? And then I, yeah. So then I started doing that. Not never on St. Clair. Well, but um, trips, I, did right? on the, I did it on the rivers. Yeah. Yep. yep. So the here on river. And uh, various other rivers, yeah. you know, the Flint River, which uh, was very, the, very much in the news. You did the Flint uh, for smallmouth? Yeah, great smallmouth fishing. And oh, wow. um, <laughs> that was when that was all in the news. Yeah. So, like, I'd be taking people up there and they'd be like, ah, is the boat going to disappear underneath us? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'd be like, that's the pipes, not the actual river. But, you know, right, anyway. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, so, that was an interesting time to be doing that. No so I kidding. guided for like, a good friend of mine, Mike Schultz, yeah, in um, Ypsilanti, Michigan, which is right outside Ann Arbor. Sure. And I did two seasons with them. And when I lived there, the first year I lived with Mike at his house and then uh, with the buddy. And then the next year I lived in the back of the fly shop. Oh, nice. So, <laughs> so we built some bunk beds and uh, that was interesting. I don't, I don't, quite remember that time as fondly as musky camper life sure <laughs> but, um yeah i was just live in security mm-hmm. nobody stole nothing 24 <laughs> 7 bodyguard <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that was interesting but but that was fun but you know what happened there was i love all those guys and and they're still my brothers and i fish with them all the time and yeah and and they can and everything like that but but the smallmouth thing wasn't me man yeah you know and it wasn't like you know, that's not why I loved fly fishing. That wasn't why I was doing what I was doing. And I was missing musky opener up here. Yep. And I just finally said, you know, guys, thank you so much for the opportunity. Right. But I can go back to my musky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's cool now is you, you'll, 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 well, I mean, you can be running some uh, smallmouth trips this April, which is cool. Free spawn. Yeah. Giants. Well, <laughs> yeah. Last year we tried. Last year was the first year it opened. Yeah. So April 1st, we started fishing and, um, it's that early, early, cold, cold, cold yeah. water, smallmouth stuff is, is, uh, is definitely right. There's a learning. Yep. Curve there. Yep. No, that'd be- We're dialing it in, but I won't be guiding for it anytime yeah. soon. I don't quite have, have it quite sure. dialed in yet. I yeah, know that would be cool. There are some freaks in those rivers. Gosh. But right after that, like, you know, you get into May in yeah. the beginning of May, stuff like that, that's when smallmouth, I mean, pre-spawn smallmouth fishing, that is so fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but just like right when it opens up right when the rivers clear out of the ice mm-hmm. and everything you know, they're just not even Pretty in there cold. yeah for sure um so yeah you but i did you mentioned st Clair. when i lived there i got to fish st Clair at least once a week 
uh, with a buddy of mine uh, who guides out there now, yeah. my buddy Eric, and who's friends with Ducci and all those yep. guys that you guys know. And um, so I got to spend a lot of time fishing out there um, for early season smallmouth stuff. I've sh- I'm sure you guys have heard about how oh, good that is. And then, yeah. and then yeah. the musky stuff, which, you know, I just, again, felt so grateful that mm-hmm. I got to, uh, I got to do that. Now I will say that when I was fishing there, I was fishing with a lot of flies Yep. and I had a lot of butt kick days where sure. we didn't catch it, you know? So everybody was always like, Oh, Lake St. Clair. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, but <laughs> it's still hard. Yeah. You know, it, it can still be hard. It's not on. It's so, not on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you see your guys' videos and other guys' videos yeah. where the oh, fishing you, is incredible. You catch I, all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, my last trip there, we, we had some really good fishing. My personal best muskies out of yeah, that lake. Yeah. But, uh, but some days. It's but you're able musky. to fish it during those crazy number of days, those fall when that spot used to be good. What, what, how many did you catch that day? 20? 30. 30. 30 muskies in one day. 30 muskies. <laughs> We went 30 for 38. <laughs> Stupid wow. casting. Yeah. And then we uh, we would have caught more, but we had to tow your buddy in. We... <laughs> oh, gotcha. <laughs> Which buddy is our, this? One of our mutual friends ran out of gas, and we had to oh, no. shame him. I won't shame him on here. But we uh, so we, we, we would have caught more, but we figured, yeah. you know, the musky guys are shining on yeah. us. We, we got to do a Samaritan thing to get back on the good graces yep. here because we just were you know, on them. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it was fun, man. We didn't get anything super big. I think, uh, well, that's not true. I mean, you know, 46 inches is a big musky. No, absolutely. Yeah. So that was a big musky, but we caught a bunch of them in that like 40 to 42, 43 inch range. And it was the most like bass fishing I've ever had musky fishing. (laughs) Just things are happening. We stopped netting them. We were just like, ah, just unhook them. Like, get get rid of it and cast and catch another one. (laughs) It's a good problem. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it was interesting. It was interesting. So that was cool. And then um, that was in November when we had that crazy day. And then I went back in December, like uh, a week and a half or two weeks later. Yeah. And that's when we got the 50, the 43, the 53 and a half, mm-hmm. and then the small one in a day. Gosh, so that was cool. Stupid. Which the 53 and a half is my biggest one yeah. I've ever caught. Yep. It was, um, do we have a picture of that? I do somewhere. Um, I don't. I don't remember the dimensions on it. I think it was like 23 or sure. something. Yeah. Yep. It was big. Big one. <laughs> Absolutely. <Cool. laughs> Especially because I was so like uh, lucky, you know, we had, we had a couple guys out there that, that gave us a little bit of pointers on where to go. Yep. Yeah. That'd... And we kind of, kind of got lucky. <laughs> it's cool. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, that's fun stuff. So tell us about a, a typical day float trip with you uh, up in northern Wisco. Typical like, float trip. What time? Uh, we get up there pretty early. Um, you know, I, I sometimes leave it up to people if they, you know, either on vacation or whatever, and they don't, depending on what kind of customer it is, you know, if they're yeah. diehard fishing, they're getting out there early. Yeah. Yep. And um, <clears throat> I'll fish usually as long as uh, people want to. Yep. The only thing is, is that the river is only so long, right? Right. right. So, you get on an eight hour float, then that's what it takes to get to the end, you know, is it is the hours. But so, so that's kind of what your, what, what your time frame is. You're looking at anywhere from between like eight and 10 hours on, on the river uh, for a full day and anywhere between seven and 12 miles, depending on the section of river that we're going to. And yeah. a lot of spots, just know that you're going to be doing a lot of you casting know you'll be and casting at muskies. It's just a matter. Are they going to be playing at that time when you're on that river? <laughs> like it's so yeah. Cool. You guys know, yeah. I don't, I'm not, I'm not, a, I don't give a lot of breaks. Yeah. Yep. You know? yep. So no. we're moving along at a good clip and, um, and you, you got to cast at spots as we're going by them. Cause like we talked about earlier, you can't go back to no. them. So yeah. Um, Certain times of year, the fish are in certain spots and certain times of year, mm. the fish are in other spots, it's just like lake fishing, right? Uh, where the fish move around and stuff like that. So depending on the time of year, you might be cruising for a half a mile. I might just be rowing like crazy to get to that next spot. So you have time to eat a sandwich or something, something like yeah. that, but you're casting. It's a lot of casting, yep. <clears throat> a lot of targets. And this isn't like blind cast, like, yeah, you know, right. uh, drifting a wee bed, yeah, whatever. Like, no, you got to get it within, you know, a foot or two feet of the bank of that rock of that underhanging log of this yep. or of that, or, 
So it's a little trick, right. you know, you kind of got to, um, <clears throat> you got to be on your game a little bit. And obviously we go get stuff out of the trees all yeah. the time, but, but um, right. I, I know I have, <laughs> it's fun. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's a little bit more testing what you're, you're capable yep. of. I will say that it takes a little bit more of a seasoned caster to really have a phenomenal day on the river. Yeah. Um, Cause you got to hit the spots, you know, yep. they're so small. It actually only takes a four foot place to hold a four foot fish. So it's amazing. Um, you know, and you got to get it by their head. And, and uh, you know, we had one of the bigger muskies that we caught last year was right at that four foot mark. And it was in July, which was cool oh, yeah. on a fly. And um, that fish came in and it was in such a small spot, like just a pocket mm -hmm. behind a rock in swift water. And he casted to it one strip of the fly and the water just erupted uh, and the fish was chasing it. And it was just like, I, I mean, you have got to be completely dead yeah, to not almost be dead when that happens yeah, right. <laughs> because it's just like everything happens in such a small area. Yeah. Fish didn't eat it. He put it back in there. The fish ate it immediately. Giant, crazy fight in fast water, which, if you haven't caught muskies in heavy current yet, yeah, that's true. It's a different, <laughs> different ball game. Yeah, yeah, it's so cool. They get into that current and they'll go fast downstream, and then it's absolutely mind blowing how fast they go upstream. Sure, sure. I'm, I'm the rowing, and doing everything I can do to keep us in a spot, yeah. and that fish goes upstream like it's no reason, you know? and it's on a and it's, on a hook, like <laughs> yeah, and you're like spinning the boat and avoiding the rocks. You yeah. know, I mean it's it's cool and it's very oh. uh it's very unique and if you're just used to lake fishing all the time it'll be something that you you won't forget. no absolutely it's a treat it is absolutely oh, gosh it's so much fun oh i'm so excited. well i know one one of the my all-time favorite catches of my life was that uh i don't I know, know 47 48 incher uh i got yeah. with you what a uh on the on the leviathan i mean that that was a river uh rat that thing had been there forever just a you know beautifully old beat up weathered wonderful greenback musky oh. that uh hit that bait the footage of that fish yeah. obviously we'll have to roll that right now because i mean i was i was ecstatic i was shaking i was in the look on chris's face when he put <laughs> that thing in the bag is priceless <laughs> man oh my <laughs> gosh that one of my favorite shows yeah. yeah yeah that was that incredible was so fun. We caught five that day, which is, you know, that's a incredible musky day wherever you go. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, in the river, that's a really good day. Um, and we caught some nice fish that day too. But what was crazy about that is we caught one that was, <clears throat> I remember you caught one of the, maybe the first, the second one, I don't remember, but it was like maybe 30 inches, you know, just a little guy. Yeah. yeah. And then we, got, we kind of got the whole spectrum, you know, we got everything from that to a three footer to a 40 incher to a low forties yep. to that to big giant. Thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so all your classes. Our, that was, yeah, our rivers are pretty healthy in that regard, and uh, that's definitely a day too that I'll never forget. That was so fun. Those are all natural Man. muskies. So cool. That's yeah. So well, like remember uh, this last spring with Heidi when we were out of the boat and that little guy was just chilling there in the grass. It's just it's big. Like, oh my gosh, it's the cutest muskie. <laughs> we're taking picture of of Heidi's muskie, yeah. and I'm. Going, Look at that <laughs> <laughs> Little baby one, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I've never That's seen cool. that before. Yeah, that was actually, the first day on the river with the swim bait. That was cool. That's oh, true. Yeah. Yeah. Magic swim. Yeah. So, yeah, and there was another one. What that one you got, Robbie, oh, on the was, swim. That was, too. that was an awesome day too. Yeah. I'm trying to remember that was like a week later or two yeah, weeks later. Yep. Just about. Yeah. That was a cool looking fish. Those river fish. Robbie you know, Robbie just, sending me these pictures of fish eating this bait and I hadn't even had a chance to right, really put it through it. the ringer yeah. yet. Oh man. I was so jealous. That was so <laughs> cool to hear fish being caught on a new bait is always exciting. Yeah. Of course. As soon as I saw that thing, I was like, Oh, that's going to be a river murderer. Mm -hmm. Cause it's, it runs so nice over those rocks and everything. It was right. just like, Oh, put that. Up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, for yeah new, that yeah. the fish was fooled. That one that you caught, Robbie, absolutely oh, down healed that thing. Although that thing probably needed a meal, <laughs> even though there's like That's, there's suckers well, they are all sometimes. over. Yeah, there's so much bait right there, and we've been fishing for about forty five seconds. Yeah, <laughs> boom, <laughs> nothing. Nice. Oh, that was a cool day. Robbie's like, you think we can put the boat in here? I'm like, 
<laughs> We're going to try. Gonna try. <laughs> and we did. Yeah. <laughs> Only a little bit of electrical ripoff came off the bottom of my, my trailer. Yeah. Just a couple wires a couple got ripped out. It was fine. <laughs> no big deal. Oh, that was, that so was, tell us a, a little more, a few of the challenges uh, guiding uh, waters such as those. Obviously, the casting thing is, is paramount, but casting um boat control is really important yep. uh that's my, my problem though not yours and then um you know the other thing too is you really this is going to sound silly but it, but you have to be on it you have to be on it all the time you have to you have to kind of have the i call it the pulse you have to be you have, to have your finger on the pulse all the time because like when we're puddle hopping or lake hopping and stuff like that like i can go fish a lake for four hours and go Hey man, this one's not going. Let's go put her on the trailer and go someplace mm-hmm. else. But I can't do that in the river. Yeah. Once, right. Once I'm committed, my shuttles run and there's a lot of moving parts to it. Like I have to somehow figure out how to get my truck and trailer to the bottom. Yep. So whether that's, you know, my customer that day doing a shuttle with me real quick and leaving my boat in the water or having one of my um, shuttle friends come and come and do that for me. So it's just logistically a little bit more challenging than, than maybe doing a lake day. Yep. Um, and you just, you gotta be really confident in your program and you, you can't, um, you know, like you can never go into a day and say, Hey, I'm throwing bucktails all day. They're going to bite a bucktail, whether they're going to bite a bucktail or not, I'm going to make them eat a bucktail. Right. Okay. There's something to be said for that, but, but that's probably not the best way that you're going to put fish in the regular, you know, you need to let them tell you what they're going to eat. Yep. And so with the river thing, if I'm going from A to B, that's where I'm going that day. And I, and once I'm on it, I don't have anywhere else to go. So I have to stick to my guns and stick to the plan and be diligent and like, okay, we're finding them in shallow wood. We're going to keep pounding shallow wood, but in between those shallow wood spots, we're going to look in these rapidy kind of swifter water because yeah. it's july and that's where they're at you know or, or, or whatever so, yeah. like you know there's fit there's always going to be that population of muskies in your area right yeah. in that stretch of river it's just where they're going to be and so some days you kind of have to pick it apart a little bit more than well, what i find the- super fun fishing with chris it's like all right so this section of river you're gonna be throwing a bucktail you get to the next spot Chris will be like, get on a top water, get on top water, get, get to the next spot. All right, throw a Medusa. Like it's it's just so fun because you got different yep. tools for different spots and it's just changing right. multiple times in a day, which you'll really not get, you know, I mean, lake fishing. It's just, uh, it's just cool. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. you know, sometimes we're catching muskies in nine, 10 inches of water yeah. and you're like, you're, you're cast up there really. Right. And it's like, you know, if the water covers their back, they could be there. Like, uh, gosh, that one early float we did um, with with Lee, and uh, we we're going to that rapid spot, and we just hear oh, that yeah. boil uh, on the shore. And yeah, I yeah. guess that was it on mini. Yeah, mini boiler, right? Mini boiler. Yeah. Yep. Cast it back there, and the thing ate it instantly. Just like, oh, it just. They don't do that on lakes a lot of times. <laughs> we get that. We caught five or seven that day too. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, that, that was fun. fun. Oh, yeah, the thing I find interesting about the river fishing is that once once you hit that first fish, you really got to take a look at that spot and yeah. analyze what kind of spot it is. What was the depth? What was the current situation? Uh, wood, rock, uh, you know, you really pay attention to what that is. And as soon as you start duplicating that, it's like everything just falls into mm-hmm. place, it seems. Yeah, and and two of the things that go into that that are really important is water temperature and water level. Yeah. Okay. Those are the two things that you're going to have to pay attention to as a river angler to have, to have success. So if you have a really good day on the river, it's imperative that you go home and go, okay, the water level was this, you know, or, you know, the temperature was, you know, 54 and a half degrees or whatever. and, And you, and you're like, okay, well, that's this and this and that and, and you know, whatever. And, and put the pieces together a little bit more. And and with lakes, temperature is obviously a big deal. But level isn't something that you're going to think about yeah, very often. Not, not often, yeah, for sure. True. Huh. So, yeah, it's a lot of homework. Different piece of the puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> it's always entertaining, though. Gosh. <laughs> 
And another thing that I try to do that I encourage everybody to do with this smaller river game is to move around a lot. Mm-hmm. If you yeah. constantly are fishing the same stretch in the same area all the time, yeah. that's bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's bad for the fish, bad for you because you're going to catch less fish. Yeah. Um, and, and the more that you diversify your stomping grounds or whatever, you're, you're going to, you're going to have more continued success and have more fun, you know, and it's, I mean, geez, it's, it's, I mean, that's part of the cool thing about all this is the adventure and the exploration part of it is, is going and going, okay, well, Hey, we caught fish over here. We know there's fish over there, but let's go check over here because (laughs) you never know. Yeah. The variety, I recall fishing with uh, Brent Perky down in uh, Virginia. And it was like, well, we're going to float this stretch today. We're going to float this stretch tomorrow. And it was always different. And he liked to mix it up. Like you just said. Yeah. Just don't harass. It's, him, it's, Im- it's so imperative when it comes to, to musky fishing and rivers. And actually, you know what? It's, it's, um, you know, ethically, it's, it's a good idea too. So you're not beating up on the same ones all the time. Right. We talked about this a little bit earlier. I think we were before the camera was rolling, but, um, you know, I've caught the same really big trophy muskie three different times, three, you know, once was in, a, in August, yeah. then that year in October, we caught it again. And then the year later in October, we caught that same fish again. And every single time it was in a completely different spot. So, you know, safe handling and, and, and all that stuff, Super catch cool. and releases, you know, how big is this fish? So the first time I caught it in August, uh, I can't, it's behind me on the wall, but I can't see my, my deal here, yeah. but, um, to point at it, well, but it, have, I'll have you in send it to August, me. yeah, in August, it was 49 inches and it ate a double 10 bucktail <laughs> and it was insane. Okay. This thing jumped. It pulled so hard. My customer, Bernie was in the front of my yeah. boat and I remember being like, Bernie, you got to pull on that thing. And him just going, I can't, I can't. I can't. <laughs> And this thing was just, it was incredible. Yeah. It was incredible. It was one of the coolest musky fights I've seen and bagged it. The, the bucktail we've all seen this before, uh, was in a complete U sure. yeah. just like one of those crazy fights had to cut the hooks out of it Yep. and, um, measured it on the bump board, 49 inches, <sighs> Bernie, who has a place in the turtle flambeau flowage. He's a retired guy. He's been fishing up here his entire life. That's the second biggest musky he's ever caught. Yeah. Uh, the first biggest one he caught down in Tennessee where we fished down there and it was a half an inch bigger and probably, uh, it was a winter pre-spawn yeah, big, giant, yeah. you know, well, 10 pounds heavier. Right, I don't right, know. Right. But, uh, anyway, but this one fought so much better, sure. you know, incredible fish. And we let it go. Got a beautiful release video. Everything's good. Fast forward to that year in October. And I was guiding a guy also from Chicago, Bernie's from Chicago. This guy's from Chicago and Asher is throwing a fly rod and he catches it. And it's so much fatter. Yeah. And you were miles down the river. Yep. And uh and he catches it and it's 48 and a half inches, but like just giant. A tough. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't even realize it was the same fish because it looked so different, time, I'm sure. Because of the difference yeah. in girth, I was just oh, yeah. like, this thing's a brute, you know? Yep. So we let that one go. It took me weeks. Uh, before I realized that it was the same fish. Sure. Oh, sure. Yep. And then I'm comparing pictures and, and yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's cool. So fast forward to that next October. So a complete full year later, almost yep. to the day. <laughs> because oh, wow. Asher's back in my boat. Asher, the guy from Chicago, who's who caught it on the fly yep. in October the previous year. Asher's back <laughs> in my boat. We're joking around about him catching that giant, giant muskie the year before and how amazing it yep. was. And uh you know, reminiscing or whatever. And, and we joke around about him catching it again. Cause yeah, you know, obviously I told him that it was a recapture yeah. and uh, we go into this spot. He throws this walleye colored fly up into this really cool corner. There's a really little boil that comes up Yeah, and I'm like, Ooh, keep moving it, keep moving it. And all of a sudden there's a much larger boil and mm-hmm. fish is on. And I'm like, Oh dude, that looked like a substantial water movement. Yeah. Like yeah. that, this is going to be a big muscle yep. and we fight it. Water's really, really dirty. We fight it. We get it up and I see it. And I immediately think, you know, like we all do this, yeah, right? Yeah. You see a 48 with their, 
tossing yeah. the fish and you're like, ooh, that might be yep, fishy. Yep. And it's knocking, you know? yeah. But, so in my head, I'm thinking, holy shit, this guy got a 48 and a half. Well, no, he's getting a 50, yeah. Before. And he's about to get a 50 <laughs> incher on the fly. Like this guy has got the, Horseshoe. he's going to buy all the lottery tickets after we get yeah, off the river today. Yeah. So we land the fish and he's beside himself. Uh, slight two second backstory. He's got almost a completely un- unfunctioning wrist sure. because he had a skateboard accident and he had this crazy fracture. He's got this giant brace yeah. on. <clears throat> and if you've never casted a musky fly rod before, uh, it's difficult, and I can just tell you, it's all wrist. You right? don't want to do it with a fractured yeah. wrist. It's terrible. Yeah. yeah, you know. So this guy's in pain. Yeah, and uh, wow. and he's fishing through it, and he catches this giant fish, and and I'm just like, dude, it's so big. You know, again Unreal. in October, must yeah. be huge. Yeah, just the whales. And as soon as I picked it up out of the bag and I laid it on the bump board, I saw the features. Sure. You know that I knew. Yeah from the previous and i was like dude this one. is your fish <laughs> and he's like yeah yeah and i'm like no no it's, like, it's your fish <laughs> this is your fish dude and uh it was incredible yeah you know but it just it just shows you same how much length you need to take was? care of As... river yeah same river um same length like 48 and a half oh same yeah length. yeah yeah uh, yeah 48 and a half didn't grow yeah. um but totally healthy right. yeah wow. um what I will say is that it had some fin wounds mm. um, the, s- since the very first time we caught it, that first October. Yeah, um, I'll send you the picture. You guys will see it. There's the, the, the anal fin and then the top fin have chunks missing out of it, right? Mm. Yeah. And then uh, spawn or, or possibly another that... thing that, that we discuss a lot in the river is otter predation. Oh, um, wow. Really? So that's another topic. But, but that does happen 100%. I'll argue with anybody as long as they want to. I'm out there enough. I guarantee you that happens. Okay. Hmm, sure. So that, that's a, that's a thing that could have happened to this fish or spawning stars, yada, yada, yada. But it was incredible how well they had healed. Sure. Okay. And, and how healthy the fish looked. And, you know, you guys have been in the boat with me. Every, anybody that's been in the boat with me knows that I'm pretty cautious with the muskies oh, yeah. and we don't hear a ton of them. Yep. You know, unless they're they're really big, but that type that size fish, you gotta you gotta, gotta see, you know, right? You, you gotta measure. no doubt. And especially after I knew it was the same one, I'm like, I gotta see if it changed. Yeah, yeah. You know? right. Oh yeah. Very so, so quick, quick bump, and Asher had waders on. I put it, we put them in the river, so all the pictures, fish is just you know enormous in the river or whatever. And obviously, that's not applicable for a lot of people because when you're in a big giant boat in the lake, you're not gonna do that. Yeah. But I, I urge you in the river, just you know. Anyway, be as careful as you can with these things because it's not a lot of them. I mean, there is, but there isn't. It's natural. There is, but there isn't. Yeah, and that, could... that fish is, you know, you guys are big on that right now, and everybody should be. Yeah. You want that fish to reproduce. Right. No doubt. And not only that, but that fish is an eater. Yeah. I want, you know, that fish made Asher's day two different trips. It made Bernie's trip a different it made time. your That's year how many life. times? <laughs> two times. Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like, you know, those fish are just so special and you can talk about it all you want, but, but, you know, we, we as musky anglers do covet these things. Yep. And it's important to remember that when, when we actually do get to put our hands yep. on them is that as careful you know, as possible. No doubt. They, they can come back, man, three times in the boat with a fish uh, that size. So and awesome. You guys know if you fish Northern Wisconsin, you get anything over 48 inches. Oh, it's that's a, your, your okay. ears pretty much made. I mean, it's tough to do. Yeah. It doesn't happen. Yeah. And I mean, and truthfully, anywhere, yeah. anywhere you go, four footers is a nice. Yeah, must. yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> I guess, yeah, yeah, no doubt. Uh, well, so that's pretty cool. We've had a couple other recaptures yeah. uh, throughout the years. You Nothing know, that uh, that crazy, I'm sure. <laughs> but yeah, that's that. As Takes far the as those stories, the cake. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> wow, I don't know how much more we want to do here. I mean, we're pretty much we got it. That was cool little little history about mr chris Whelan, how he started this crazy thing 10 years yeah. that's super cool <laughs> yeah, man. Gosh. i'm trying to remember uh how we kind of uh, got to fish together i'm you know i'm oh sure yeah i have a hard time remembering everything i i know i spoke with you one time at the chicago muskie show yeah. and that I was maybe 
that's that's pretty the first time I remember talking to you. Mm-hmm. But uh, not, to, not to you know date you, Gramps, but you know that was. <laughs> hey, I'll fess up to it. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I've I've known Lee since high school, and then you guys started doing the TA stuff, mm-hmm. and um, I think you guys were coming back from the Keys or yeah. something, and I was like, you know swing through Tennessee, let's do some fishing, and we talked about this before, but classic Southern musky fishing fashion. It rained. Yeah. Yeah, no, we didn't, didn't. Yeah, we didn't get the musky fish. We, we <clears throat> excuse me, went striper fishing. And we didn't catch nope. any. Um, <laughs> and then I think we went musky fishing up here. I, I got got you on a float, and I don't think we did too well. Um, and then I think the third one we did really well. Yeah, third one was the the big day. Yeah, yep. Yeah, and then um, kind of ever since then, I don't want to jinx us, but pretty much a fish you, a trip or more. We've been having some really good trips I together, know. and then. Uh, the trips this year were with you, uh, Robbie and, um, and Michael, we had some pretty yeah, fun days. No doubt. Gosh. Ugh. What yeah, we can was- do folks is, uh, we, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can, uh, we'll put some links of, uh, some of the videos we've done with Chris and you can kind of rewatch those, yeah. or if you haven't seen them yet or whatever, um, that's, that's a good incentive to get up there and go fish with Chris because you will never forget it. That I can promise. No. It's just like the, the picture taking still uh, skills of Chris, like some of the coolest images uh, in musky yeah. fishing have come from Chris Willen's boat, which is, you know, super cool. Well, I appreciate yeah. that. No, I mean, it seems like awesome. the fly guys, the fly guys as a whole are just that much more into, into it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't know. That's well, interesting. We catch less fish than you guys. We got more time to think about how we're going to set up. The <laughs> There's a lot of time rolling. <laughs> no doubt no it is cool though i mean gosh you can't you can't beat that yeah but um and then you know we've been talking about a lot of fly fishing but i do a lot of regular fishing yeah too, you yeah know, with the, yeah yeah you certainly don't have to just go fly fishing no in my personal life i will say that you know when when i first got the fly bug i did mostly that but in the last couple of years i i really do whatever the conditions yeah uh, call for yeah um in personal fishing so if i think like oh man today is a day where a fly could be they are going to be biting a fly i'm going to do that but if they're going to be biting a water chopper i'm throwing I'm a throwing water it. chopper yeah <laughs> <laughs> no i i enjoy that no. that's the cool thing about will and i mean he just he thinks his fly is just another tool to your arsenal which is something that oh, you know, yeah. would be cool to learn but i have no idea how to do um you know i urge every musky angler that just 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 on this one thing mm-hmm. is just how well they eat a fly in certain situations yeah that it behooves you so much to just have that in your quiver yep. to sure. be able to go hey man i moved this fish two times on let's go on back on it with a fly glider and it won't eat and now i can hang this fly in its face and you know <clears throat> it could happen must yeah be whether it's one or a dozen more fish in a season, everybody wants more, yeah, yeah, you know? Absolutely. And I can almost guarantee you that if you add the fly to your arsenal of, of, you know, stuff, then you will have an opportunity to put more fish in the boat for yourself. You know, it's cool. Yeah, it, doesn't I believe that. Be, yeah. it doesn't have to be this lifestyle thing. Right. You don't need you don't, to like, <laughs> you, don't, you don't need a, I like it. <laughs> That's funny. I you like know, it. Yeah. <laughs> You can just have a fly rod, rod. and you don't have to be a fly guy. <laughs> I promise you, you don't have to get a funny hat or a vest, or you don't have to watch any specific movie or know any special crazy knots or be able to do a headstand. You don't like, have to have a bug collection uh, in formaldehyde no. that you bring to the you know, lake or the river to see what's happening oh, right now. Gosh, that's funny. Living proof, man. I, I'm the the most uh non-trouty fly guy right. yeah, around <laughs> fly person that you might know and and i still love fly fishing yeah you yep. know and, and it it's a passion for sure and and i do i will say I, I don't get like preachy about the fly but it's pretty cool to catch one on a fly man yeah yeah and it's it's a completely different battle it's it's a lot more like hand to hand you don't use the reel very much yep. Yeah. And it does feel pretty rewarding when you get in the net. When you, when you fool a big fish on a yeah. fly rod, it's a different, it's a different type of, uh, of accomplishment, yep. you know? And, and, yeah. and the results the same, right? You got the big musky in the net. Yep. Uh, but just the, the process is a little different and For sure. the process can be very good. 
And what's cool is, Will and you helped develop one of the best uh, fly rods for musky fishing. You, I did, I, you know, true. I, I got really lucky and, and got to work with G. Loomis and Steve Ray Jeff. Yeah. And, um, you know, those guys over there are top notch, you know, Shimano. Yeah. yeah. All those guys, the, the best technology in the industry. So I got really lucky again. I, I say that a yeah. lot, but, you know, I got lucky and I got to work with some great people. And that was quite the process. Awesome. I mean, that, that was a long it was, deal. it was a year. Yeah. It was a year long process. It was the second rod I designed. Yeah. So I knew kind of where we wanted to go, but um, they were just phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And they just took everything I said yep. and and knew that this is what I was doing all the time. And this is what I wanted. And the key was to make the best tool for this job. Yep. And and they, they let us do it. And I, I stand by yep. it. I'm really proud of it. And uh, what it, rod it is makes, that, Chris? It's the G Loomis IMX Pro M. And the M stands for musky. The IMX Pro line. It's kind of their mid-range line, um, but yep. the t- the technology, just with the graphites and the components and just everything into the rod is specifically designed for muskies. And the cool thing about that, it was the only rod that was built from the ground up, like uh, butt to tip, yep. that was just with one thing in mind. Muskies. We didn't want to be like, okay, we're going to be able to musky fish and tarpon fish with this, or we're going to be able to do this yep. or that. It was like, we're making a musky rod. Cool. So that was awesome. Is that- you know, and, it, and another thing that I was saying earlier about getting people into fly fishing, it's never been easier to cast a musky fly sure. than it is right now. The with equipment. The rods and even the line, the line yeah. is a very important part with fly fishing. We've got musky specific fly lines now that are meant to cast these big giant no flies. Kidding. I and, did not know that. Wow. And do it in the way that we designed it to do it. Sure. So very lucky with scientific anglers, myself and Blaine Chocolate, who's a world-class musky guide also yeah. in Virginia. And um, a guy named Gabe up in Minnesota that we all got to work together wow. and make a line that's for musky fishing. Yeah. So basically what I'm telling you guys is you can do it. Yeah, you know, there's specific right. things for it. Because before the before this one rod, this is the only rod of its class that's designed specifically for muskies. There's musky fly. There was musky fly rods before, but they took existing rods, Thanks. right, and they re, re redid the handles on them sure. and things like that. Not, but we what we did is we built a taper that was for this task. Yeah. Okay. You know. Gotcha. So there was ones out there before, even ones that I was involved yep. with that were good for it. But not great. But what's nice is it's just like like you said, you know, w- when you go to a golf course, you're not putting with a with a pitching wedge, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. or you're not driving with a seven iron. Sure. You know, you got to do the the things that are that that are the right yep. tools, you know. So it's, huh. it's cool, yeah. you know, and um and it just makes it easier. It makes my life a lot sure. easier because the people that get in the boat can do what I want them to do easier, <laughs> uh, more efficiently. Yeah. Yep. Huh. <laughs> So it's, a, it's, been, it's been a blast. And, and then, you know, I mean, we could talk about this stuff forever, but the fly design too. I mean, the original flies sure. that we were throwing, you look back 10 years, yeah. the flies were thrown now. It's like mind blowing sure. the, 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 the difference. So it's, it's cool. You know, it's, um, yeah, to be at I the imagine, beginning of that, that's awesome. I imagine it's like a lot of these really cool dudes that you guys talk to about all the time, you know, Lee at your, yourself and, and Herbie yeah. and Pete. And, you know, all these guys that got to see progressions of, Musky you fruit. know, going from pool cue rods to people throwing 10 footers yeah. now, you know, or, right. you know, the lines or the reels, or you could talk about it forever. Right. But, but I think Lee, you would agree, like with the equipment that we have now, it's never been easier to go and do it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's gravy. It's, it's, it makes it so much easier. I, at the time when I first started using a nine foot rod, which was 1999 or 2000, uh, they were salt water rods and, and they were, uh, they were, they were pretty good, actually darn rods. But, uh, and now with yeah. telescoping to be able to just put your rod in your truck or your locker, is just crazy. So exactly. Uh, I remember one of the first musky rods that I used was a Stu apt. If you're a fly fisherman, you know that name, but he's a really famous guy from down in, in the Florida way. And, uh, and he's a tarpon guy. Mm-hmm. So I was using a tarpon rod. It was a 12 weight tarpon rod. Stu Apps name was on it. There was a picture of a tarpon on yeah. it and it worked, but it, it, it hurt, Yeah, you know, it wasn't 
perfect. It wasn't what it needed to be. Yeah. So it's just like, it's cool to hear about that. Like first nine foot rod, first musky rod, this and that. It's just like, we're so, uh, we're so very yeah. lucky in the time that we live in to, to have the tools. Hmm. Uh, we just got to get some of those uh, <clears throat> hot spots like Mille Lacs and other places rolling right. again so we can use these yeah, tools, no, right? For sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, would be cool. Uh, well, that kind of makes me want to learn how to fly fish. Anytime I talk. I know we you. get a lot of requests. Guys say, Lee, oh, Lee, Robbie, you got to try. You just got to go out there and try it, you know. I can and- see it being pretty cool in some waters up here. Especially if you located well, a fish. Yeah. Even if you're not proficient with fly fishing and, and you're a musky fisherman, you already get it. Yeah. You already get what you need to do because you know how to catch muskies. Right. So you see where you need to cast. You understand what the fly needs to do. do yep, action-wise. To get- so the only thing that you're, you're missing is the mechanical yep. part, right? And that can hey. be that can be picked up. In a day. You know, yeah. you're already a musky angler. You've already got the mindset of musky fishing. Yep. Right. And then you just add another thing. And, and I'll be honest with you, it will not, if this is how you learn how to fly, fly fish for muskies, this is how you do it. And it's foolproof. You don't bring the other stuff. You go out for a day yep. and you go musky fishing and you don't bring the rod and you have to take it as like, okay. And I know that's tough for some people because you don't get to fish every yep. day Right. for yep. us to be like, okay, we're going to go take a day and do this. And then, yeah. and then no big deal. And then, you know, that's Monday. And then Tuesday, we're going to go back and throw bucktails again. Yep. Or, or, or whatever. But so I understand if somebody only gets to fish once or twice a month that they don't want to waste a day trying to learn yeah. something. But what I will say is that it will benefit you later on, sure. you know? No, no that makes sure. sense. Sure. I just think of the fatigue, think of, the fatigue of but see, holding it that I much different. It and much different than and that it's funny that you use that term and everything, because the, the biggest thing when we sat down with Loomis to do this rod was they're like, what do you want to do? And I said, the AFF, okay, the anti fatigue factor. Mm-hmm. That's what I want. Mm-hmm. I want something that I can do. I can fish with this rod all day long and not feel like I fished with it all day long. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and it's the same thing when you first get, you know, your your hands on a tranks and you're like, man, I can right, I can do this a lot easier than my old Calcutta yep. or or you know, fifty six hundred. Yep. And uh or rod, you know, fill in the blank or, you know, using the right line and stuff. So it, the, the fatigue thing is there and it will take you a little bit to get used to doing things in a different yeah. way, but, but not like it used to sure. be, you know, sure. you've got a really good chance at, at, at figuring it out quicker and, and being like, this doesn't hurt at mm-hmm. all, you know, because I can tell you it used to hurt a lot Yep. and <laughs> your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder, yep. you know, all that stuff, it used to hurt. And now, it it really doesn't. Sure. Huh. That's cool. Is my microphone working? Yeah. Do you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Just seemed a little weird on this end. Well, I think it's time to wrap her down. Well, thanks so much yeah. for having me on, guys. Hey, Willen, that was fun. We learned some things. It was. That's cool. I can't cool. see you guys, but I know you. <laughs> I know his screen's not working, <laughs> but <laughs> he's just looking off into the black screen, but. Dang, Technology. that was cool. Guys, we encourage you all to get out with uh, Chris Willen this year. You won't forget it. Just awesome yeah. stuff. Um, yeah, I'm excited to get out with him as well. You, Lee, I'm sure you are too. Oh, man. I'm, yeah, I'm always chomping at the bit for a river trip with Chris, yeah. uh, no doubt. And each time it's just been, there's been something memorable every trip we've taken. Pretty much. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to throwing some surface space again for a man that follow you had Robbie oh, uh, last summer on the chopper XL. That was unbelievable. Beast. Yeah. You got some beast. unfinished business on that. So no beast. doubt. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, you can stream this on Podbean, Spotify, or Apple. Uh, yeah. Check out Chris Willen's guide service. Anything else, Chris? Instagram, whatever. CW guide on Instagram. Check that out. Um, that's it guys. Hope everybody's staying safe. Yep. And, uh, we're, I know in the Northwoods we're, uh, past the hundred day mark. So we're less than a hundred days. Ah, yes. And the southern <laughs> range, I think you guys are somewhere in the low sixties, yep. high 50 days. It's coming. Somewhere in there. It's coming. I'm pumped. I'm excited we're getting there guys. Yep. We're getting there. <laughs> All righty. See you guys. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.